Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 15, Part 2. Hello, my name is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Class Session 15 of Introduction to Neural Networks. We're near the end of this course, so Class 15 is going to look at some of the future directions for neural networks. Neural networks is a field that evolves somewhat slowly, but there are new directions that are considered and may prove promising for neural network programming. We will look at such things as quantum computing, models used for the neural network, and whether it should be emulating neurons, and we're going to also look at neural network frameworks in the next class session. We begin by looking at the models employed for neural networks. Neural networks attempt to model the human brain, but to what degree should we model the human brain? We model other computers. For example, I can use my modern computer to emulate a Commodore 64. In this way, my computer pretends it's a Commodore 64. It's not really. My computer does not emulate this down to the atomic level or even to the transistor level. It doesn't recreate the transistors and gateways that are contained in a Commodore 6510 microprocessor. Rather, it emulates the logical functions. It emulates what the 6510 processor does. By emulating the neural network, we are emulating the brain down to its most basic level. We are emulating individual cells. Perhaps this is too low of a level. This is one ongoing debate in artificial intelligence. Consider how man first tried to develop flight. To create aircraft, early inventors looked at the only model of flight that they had, the bird. Birds are marvelously designed creatures. They are capable of flight, and they are capable of very precise acrobatic maneuvers as they fly around and attempt to land on something as small as a tree branch. They can fly very fast, they can glide, they share aspects of both helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft as they go about their maneuvers. Birds provide thrust by flapping their wings. This was a hang-up that early inventors had. They wanted to create aircraft that could flap their wings, or they wanted to give humans wings. Even very early inventors, as early as the Greeks, looked to try to give human beings wings. Icarus and his father tried to escape from their imprisonment on the island of Crete by creating wings for themselves. In mythology, this worked out okay, at least until the sun melted the wax wings on Icarus's son and he plunged to his death in the sea. Early inventors tried some of the same methods. Early inventors tried to create aircraft that could flap their wings or actually give human beings wings. While this works good for birds, it does not work good for human-engineered aircraft. Here you see something called an ornithopter. This is what you call a man-made aircraft that attempts flight through flapping their wings. There are some modern experimental aircraft that are capable of flight by an ornithopter sort of means where wings are flapped, but by and large, inventors learned that they should not emulate biology exactly that they should use what design is best suited to a human engineered craft. They learn to create the fixed wing aircraft. Perhaps we need a fixed wing neural network. Rather than attempting to find out how the human, wor human brain works through biology, perhaps psychology and cognition are the keys to unlocking the power of human thought and giving the computer creativity and the ability to think like a human being. This is one of the ongoing debates in neural network science and artificial intelligence. Alternately, you could just make computers faster and try to emulate the individual neurons down to a very biological level. Quantum computers seek to do just that. Quantum computers attempt to diverge from the current computer architecture and use physics to perform the actual operations on the memory of the computer. This would create very fast computers that could be applied to many fields of which neural networks is one. Current computers of today are called von Neumann machines. They operate on a bus. You see the bus here, which are the wires that move the data in a very streamlined way from processor to memory to video cards to whatever. The bus is the bottleneck. You can only process as fast as the bus allows. You need to parallelize this in such a way to make it faster. 
quantum computing attempts to use physical properties or quantum mechanics to perform the operations. Quantum mechanics allow you to use nature itself and quantum mechanical operations on the memory of the computer to perform operations very fast and on a tremendously large amount of data. This would allow the computers to be considerably more powerful than the, their von Neumann counterparts and would allow vast amounts of memory to be used. The memory of a quantum computer is a individual particle or a qubit as you can see here. A qubit has states of 0 or 1 just like a regular bit but unlike a von Neumann bit the quantum bit or the qubit can have superposition states and superposition is a feature of quantum mechanics that allow it to have to be both simultaneously 0 and 1 to varying degrees. Quantum computers are perhaps a future way that neural networks may be implemented in the future. However, quantum computers exist at this point mostly in the scientific laboratory. It will be some time before they are ever able to be used in mainstream computing. At this point, we've only performed simple operations on a relatively small amount of quantum memory or, or qubits. Quantum computing provides hope for the future of emulating the brain down to the neuron level. In the future, neural net who knows where neural networks will go? Perhaps it will be something with quantum computing where we simply get computers so fast that they are able to model the human brain down to the individual neuron level. Perhaps it'll be a more psychological approach where we understand cognition and we understand how the human brain actually thinks and we don't go down to the neuron or the transistor level. We emulate the human brain and the aspects of the human brain that we're actually interested in, forgetting the biology and simply emulating the functions and features of the human brain that we seek to implement. At this point, we definitely do not have computers capable of thought at the level that human beings have. We are simply making crude attempts to emulate parts of human thought. But who knows what the future may hold for neural networks and artificial intelligence programming. This concludes part one. In part two, we're going to look at the NCOG neural network framework that we also make available that allows you to create more advanced neural network structures than we covered in this introductory course. We hope you will continue with part two. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.